Alright guys, it's now time for a super chat with my super guest and my super guest today is a beautiful flower a protea to be precise he's a right hand batsman and wicket keeper having represented the proteas easterns titans high felt lions paul rocks just to name a few ladies and gentlemen please welcome mangaliso mosehle brother a big welcome to super tv and thank you so much for joining us well, no, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much for, for having me. Um, yeah, so I was uh, quite keen to chat to you guys when I got the invite. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'm quite uh, excited about uh, the chat. Dude, I am super excited. I've been excited the whole day. I need to ask you this, though, before we get into anything else. You are a professional cricket player, and I'm pretty sure that you get bombarded by emails as a professional cricket player every single day. If you had, Mangaliso, so 2,000 unread emails, and you could only read a hundred of them. How would you go about choosing which ones to answer? Oof, I actually might have like 2,000 emails unopened. Ah, is it? <laughs> <laughs> already, already. Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm actually not really good with emails. Like I prefer phone calls to be quite honest. Okay. Um, yeah, and unless if it's uh, from the bank, you know, then I'll, I'll read those. Those will be quite important. Or if it's from the CEO, but other than that, that will just take my time to, to go through them. You know. Okay, yeah, 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 no, 2,000. That's a, dude, that's a lot, bro. Like, who's sending you these emails? Uh, no, I need to ask. Yeah, it's probably like, like you know, when you subscribe to things and you get like uh, letters, yeah, some of them are just those emails. So I just need to unsubscribe so I, I'll, I'll actually stop getting them. Yeah, you, yeah, do that. Dude, like, spam is the worst. Anyway, to, to someone who has never made it to a national squad in in cricket in rugby in sports in general or even athletics describe that call up to the pro tiers can you remember how you found out and where you were at the time um yeah i actually um it was actually quite an interesting story because i was in i was in amsterdam uh, playing a cricket in amsterdam um yeah in 2020, 2016 i think um and um, i mean i was i was chatting to to like one of my my pastor, one of my friends and we chatted yeah. about uh, like dreams and you know like trusting you know god for certain things you yeah. know um, and I was like, you, you know, like I'm 26 at the time. I thought I was going to play when I was 21. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, I got the call. Um, I remember we played the Springboks versus the Proteas in yes. December. Yes. Um, so that was sort of like just to be around the team and around the guys. And um, yeah, I got a phone call um, yeah, during that time. And then uh, I played my first game in January, you know. And um, yeah, so I was actually very, very, very excited. Um, I couldn't believe it. Um, so I was actually like out of voice, to be quite honest, you know. Dude, playing against the Springboks, how was that feeling? Can you remember walking up to these giants of men's and just shaking their hands and just having conversations with them? Was that like a dream come true for you as well as a cricket player? Um, yeah, I, mean, I, well, I played like not great rugby in high school. Um, yeah. And I've always been like a big supporter of the Springboks. And um, I think me and Trevor had a moment. Um, yeah, <laughs> definitely. What, 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 what Everyone saw that. <laughs> Yeah, which which has been trending, you know, so I was definitely not going to take him on because he's a big man. Uh, but it was nice to just to be with different professionals, uh, yeah. just to mingle with uh, the rest of the guys. So uh, it was like quite a quite quite a nice outing, and um, the fans actually enjoyed the game, so which was quite nice. Um, and um, yeah, that was quality. It was a yeah, it was a wonderful day. Was cricket uh, always a passion of yours, uh, Mangaliso, or did you know from the start, or did you just sort of grow into it because you were that good at it? Um, uh, well, I mean, I think when 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 you come in the township, you know, um, we I mean, we all want to play soccer, you know, still enjoy soccer, mm -hmm. and um, they introduced cricket to to my primary school at the time, and uh, I always used to watch it with my uncle. Now and then, we used to watch Test cricket, you know, because uh, he was always like a massive fan. Yeah. And when they introduced it uh, to my school, I was like, I mean, we all playing soccer. Let me just do something different. And at the time, uh, we were getting like uh, free biscuits from Baker's Mini Cricket in any way. Oh, you know? wow, okay. Um, and yeah, yeah, I just uh, yeah, I fell in love with the game, um, and here yeah, we are, been actually. Yeah, been playing for I think over 20, 20, 22 years because I started when I was eight. Wow, wow, dude, that's quite an incredible journey because everyone's journey, obviously, in cricket, especially it starts in primary school or in high school. So to have to hear that you've been playing this game for over twenty years, it's absolutely <laughs> incredible, bro. Are you feeling any fatigue now, or do you still have that hunger for the game? Um, yeah, definitely. And uh, I mean, I, I did obviously go through a, a bit of a, a phase where not not really um, lose um, 
love for the game. Mm. Uh, but also when I played for South Africa, then it was a dream come true that yeah. I didn't play. I was almost like out the squad. And then um, obviously I had to leave Joburg and start a game in Durban, you know. Um, so that whole process was uh, quite a tough one. Um, but I mean, with all of that process, like I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about uh, that I still do love the game. I still want to give back, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I think also, uh, not that I'm old, but there's like a lot of young guys in our team, uh, which is fantastic. So um, yeah. I have to like be fit and keep up with them. Because they 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 I would say that I'm old, um, but yeah, I, mean, I still love I still love I still love the game. Um, it has given me so much, you know. It has given me so much opportunities to travel to meet different people, um, and this is it's, yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful sport. And I've learned a lot about. Uh, my life as well through cricket, you know, um, you know, and I've met like some of my closest mates through cricket, you know. Um, oh, wow. So um, yeah, my my love grew again, and um, yeah. Hopefully, uh, I can still play for a couple more years. Dude, it's uh, absolutely amazing to hear that your passion is still there, the fire is still there, and uh, we'll definitely be seeing a lot more of you, obviously. I need to ask you just a random question. Though. What is your favorite pet name a partner has ever given you, and where did it come from? It's a SSSP. S S S P. Yeah, S P. Uh, it's short for something. I'm not sure if I can mention it on live TV. Oh, we over 18 channel. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> it was, it was se sexy pants. Sexy pants. You know. Sexy pants. Yeah. Ah. yeah. <laughs> Where did that come from? Were you wearing sexy pants or were they just so tight and it was like, hmm, yes. Yeah, I do. I do like skinny jeans though. So probably because they weren't too tight. <laughs> probably because they weren't too tight. You know. Okay, yes. awesome, man. Thank you for letting us know that. Listen, yeah. in January 2017, you make your international T20 debut for the Pro Tiers against Sri Lanka. You hit a six on your first delivery, bruh. Take us through that day, waking up in the morning, driving to the stadium, receiving your cap, and walking out to face that first ball at Super Sport Park. Can you remember it? Um, yeah, actually, like, I mean, leading up into that, a week and a half, uh, obviously, we were training with the squad. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was actually fine throughout the week. Um, and, um, and then the day before, normally they give you a cap and they obviously explain um, what does a protea mean, you mm. know, sort of, you, you're going to play, you basically get your cap um, before that. And uh, Adrian Bell was there, was still coach at the time, so they explained what the protea was. So I got yeah. my, my caps. Um, and when I got back to my hotel, I actually got nervous. You know? Oh, dude, <laughs> I, like, I can oh, imagine. This is, this is actually real. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was quite strange. And, yeah. yeah. Um, so obviously, I mean, luckily, well, not luckily, uh, but it, it was raining at the time, so it was a shortened game. And as I was walking down, I saw my mentor, uh, oh. who actually said I was going to play for South Africa when I was 11 years old. And he was one of the first guys that I called. Oh, and dude. He, he, yeah, he was actually commentating that game. So when I walked down this, uh, the stairs, he's like, just remember, there's millions of people watching and don't mess this one up. You know? ah, <laughs> no <laughs> pressure, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no pressure, you know. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, a bit of, bit of the story with, uh, with my first uh, game. Dude, that must have been such an incredible feeling. I mean, the crowd, obviously, yes, there was rain, but I'm pretty sure there was such a moment of pride in you as well. Obviously, you've represented South Africa before um, in the under-19s, but this must have felt a different kind of level of proud. Um, yeah, most, most, most definitely. And I think what was beautiful about that is that I had my grandmother there. Um, oh, wow. She came to watch the game and most of my family was there, you know. Um, so besides obviously uh, getting my cap, I think also that was like a moment that I'll actually cherish, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was super fortunate and honored to have represented my country. Not uh, many people can say that. Um, so yeah. yeah, really, I was really fortunate. What a story, man. Dude, how do you feel about pineapple on pizza? Oh, that is like the worst thing you could possibly do. Thank you! <laughs> Thank you, Mangali. So I'm not the only one. I'm not the <laughs> only one. <sighs> Alright, let's carry on. <laughs> now, we don't get to see cricket players, cribs and rides. Please tell us, who has the most impressive crib and ride among you cricketers that you've ever visited? Uh, I think Faf has got a, a nice car. Okay. Yeah, he's got a super amazing car. Uh, I haven't been to his place yet, but from what I've seen on Instagram, yeah, because um, I put a picture of his um, walking closet the other time. Ooh. And he's a very stylish guy, you know. Uh, he really is, so eh? I think, yeah, it must be like a beautiful, beautiful crib. You, know? you have the Bible verse Mark eight thirty four to thirty six tattooed on your calf. What does this verse say, and why is it so important to you? <laughs> How did you even know that? <laughs> I know everything. I do my research. 
Please answer yeah, my question. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah it's, it's, it's one of my, my, my favorite scriptures, you know. Mm. Um, basically, I mean, the last part says, I mean, for what profits the man that gains the whole world but loses his soul. Yes. Um, and I think what that means for me is that um, a lot of the times in like our world, we do things just for gain, you know, uh, regardless of whether we walk over people um, and stuff like that, you know. Um, so for me, it is like so relatable about um, you mustn't like sell yourself to worldly things in a way. You know, it's not to say that nobody wants to, um, good things in life because we all do, mm. uh, but not um, at the price of like your own soul or your own sanity or your own, um, um, yeah, just yourself, you know. That is beautiful, man. I, I, I have to ask you this question. Um, if, if animals could talk, which animal do you think would be the rudest? Uh, it definitely has to be hyenas, eh? They, they just have an attitude about themselves. <laughs> Everyone in studio is in agreement with you. Immediately when I said it, they were like, hyena. I think we've been watching a lot of uh, Lion King. Everyone has been watching a lot of that. <laughs> And and and, and, yeah, and, and those ideas are quite ridiculous on the line King as well. Anyway. <laughs> okay, but listen, the three the three team cricket uh, game took place a couple of a couple of weeks. It seems like a couple of months ago. Do you think that do you think this new format of three team cricket can catch on in South Africa? Um, I think it's it's nice. It was nice entertainment. Um, um, this is my view. I'm, I'm very old school, uh -huh. you know. Um, I still believe in traditional cricket and test cricket, you know. Um, but I think also maybe just for marketing and maybe like the way um, cricket is going, maybe it would be like a nice thing to have. But I still think we should keep, um, you know, the the original formats of, of, of the game. Um, you know, because it's just how it's been. No, uh, but yeah, I think yeah. in terms of like for marketing purposes and stuff like that, maybe it might be uh, something to look at. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, to me, it still seems like very complex as well. So, you know, <laughs> I still need to learn about, about that game. Yeah. Dude, you're not the only one who was confused though of what was happening in that game. But I think, you know, obviously you, you, you end up getting used to something and I'm sure one day, one day, but right now, uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. I'm not convinced. One more question. This is the last question that I have for you. Your faith seems to play such a massive role in your life, in your career, in everything that you do, everything that you stand for. How would you then describe this to someone else who may be struggling in life but has never had that kind of connection that you have? What would you tell that person? What has been working for you? Yeah, I mean, I think through, through, throughout, um, and I actually had a conversation with, with, with someone today about that, actually. Okay. Uh, and I think, you know, I've always been a firm believer that things do happen in life to shape us or to lead us into a direction. And mm. I'm a big believer that, um, you know, I believe God is real, obviously, mm. as we've mm. broken. And I think once we actually understand um, the... The, or once we have like an encounter and understand God's love, yeah. you know, um, only then we can really experience who He truly is and um, how He actually takes us, takes us through challenges, you know. And I think if I had to, you know, share about my own journey from mm -hmm. where I come from and where I've been and my ups and downs, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I would have done it without God's grace. And obviously, I've, I've been fortunate enough to have like strong people uh, around me, you know, throughout my journey in, in, in here in Durban, uh, which I mean, yeah. was like a tough, tough year and a tough mm -hmm. couple of months. Mm -hmm. and I had um, a, a very strong pastor, Pastor Glenn, um, which uh, he's based here in Durban and he's played like such a significant role in helping me through that process, you know. Um, I think also that plays like such a massive, massive role uh, in yeah. terms of like growing your faith. Uh, yeah. And mostly, I mean, yeah, we chat about cricket, but I yeah. mean, I'm not about cricket actually, like a little bit about cricket, but yeah. just growing my faith and he's always been encouraging and he's always like showing interest, always came and watches uh, cricket games as well. So he genuinely like had like care, you know, which I mean, that does help, you know. Oh, and but, yeah. That's what the world, the world needs, you know. Oh, brother, that is so inspirational, man. I really appreciate you, obviously, just letting us into your life and allowing us to see you in a different way and seeing all the things that stand so important to you in your life. Man, I wish you all the best uh, for the future in your journey as a cricketer, as a business entrepreneur, as a super all-round nice guy. I wish you all the best for your future. We'll definitely, I hope to be seeing you again wearing that Proteus shirt in the near future. But all the best for the future and thank you so much for joining us. 
Oh, yeah, no, thank you. Thank you very much for, for having me. And I trust it won't be the last time. Uh, Definitely not. It's been an absolute pleasure sharing with you guys. And um, yeah, thank you for allowing me to share my story. And uh, hopefully, you know, I know it's an interview, but hopefully, I mean, it can inspire someone, can tell someone, you know. And uh, thank you very much again. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mangali. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was my super guest, the beautiful flower, the prot here, Mangali Somosehle. He, guys, I feel so inspired from his chat there. Like, uh, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you all about it on Facebook later. For now, though, we wish him all the best for the future. Let's take a quick break. Don't go anywhere.